So, Melba, we finally get a chance to <laughs> chat. My goodness, yes. I'm so glad to be with you, Roland. <laughs> <laughs> We've crossed paths um, before. Excuse me, uh, uh, hello. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> we crossed paths before. I, I, last time, oh my God, you sang at Rainbow Push. Uh, uh, um, oh God, yeah, well, I got, I got that video. Long ago? Of it. Yes. Uh, then, of course, last year with COVID and everything, always corresponding on Instagram, hanging oh, out yes. with D Nice and Club Quarantine <laughs> and, and all of that. Yes. No, 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 no. no. What, we remember Push. Hmm? No, you were we, last it was my TV One show. Yeah, I, and I, I think you were on the same. I think we were the same day with Dougie Fresh. I think we, we we shot something in the green room with the both of you. I don't know, but I know I was with you since Rainbow. Yeah, I, since Rainbow it was on TV One. Yes, Dougie Fresh on the same show that, that day. Is that Miss Kathy Hughes? Huh? Still? Yeah, yeah. So a certain CEO, but yeah, that's it's Urban One TV One. Okay, I'm talking. Yeah. Times and people progressing. Oh yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, because that's right. Because it was, it was uh, on TV one shows. Okay, you boss man, why are we here? Huh? Because you a newsman. No, no. What's well, No, no, no. See, I can do all what? of it. See, just like you, I, you sing. I don't do all act, of no, it. No, no, no. But see, you I do sing, not play basketball. You act on the stage. <laughs> You've been on television. You've been in movies. Oh, you named the you things. Seen, okay. see, you see, named say, the categories so that we are. Right. See, so you, you know, it's like, yo, you could do multiple things. Well, we are compatible. So I can do news. I can do entertainment. I can do culture. I can do business. So, you know, we sort of flow with it. And yeah, we're yeah. here because, so I talked to Michelle Roberts, who runs the uh, executive director of the National Basketball, Basketball Players Association. And I said, well, look, I said, you know, I said, I got a couple other interviews to do. She says, we would love to host you uh, in uh, our offices. I was like, I bet, let's do it. So we're here. <laughs> oh. How so, things with you? Fantastic. I'm just asking you, why am I here? Because this is what I do. Woo! See, when you own your show. So I just get lucky. <laughs> when you own your show, you can talk you to do what you want to talk do. to. You, you got, wanted to do Melbourne more? You ain't got to ask nobody. Woo! You got to ask nobody. I heard it. <laughs> I'm here because he wants me here. See, ain't got to ask nobody. Get it. Ain't got to ask nobody. <laughs> Going well? I'm doing very well, thank you. COVID was was was, was crazy, and you were all over the place. I mean, I swear, <laughs> I swear, you were you were on Folk Live in the morning, <laughs> midday, night. It's three o'clock in the morning. Mel pop in. I'm playing music in Club Brown Liquor. You pop in as well. Yeah. Uh, you 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 were all over that thing. Well, I had some help. I didn't do it all by myself, but it helped that I was shut in. I didn't have nothing better to do. Well, we all were. <laughs> Except mind y'all's business <laughs> <laughs> and see what's going on in the music world. Yes. And of yes. course, it, it, it. Well, first of all, that whole. I mean, it still impacts. Uh, Absolutely. All of us, so. It, very deeply so, but I got to say thank you so much to uh, Dean Nice uh, for giving some um, play to us um, grown up artists <laughs> and reminding people that everything old ain't bad. Right. He right. kept my music up along with other people, and uh, he's also been debuting my new music. I have a new song. I know. I oh, first, that's why I first heard it oh. when he debuted it. Well, well, give him the news. No, you give him the news. You can no. tell him. It's called So in Love. <laughs> It's beautiful. They, they tell me it's stepping. Okay. You know what that is? Of course. I lived in Chicago six years. Oh, but he knows what stepping is. That's right. I have to go to Chicago so I can learn. No, you ain't got to go to Chicago. Well, I can learn. go to Chicago so I can party. No, you got to go to Chicago. I, look, you can party anywhere. Look, I ain't. But why can't I go to Chicago? No, you can go to Chicago <laughs> to party. I'm saying, well, you can party right here, party there, party somewhere else. He's so much news, he changed the subject. I was just trying to tell you the tempo of the song. No, 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 I'm saying. So, so, no, I'm saying. It's a, it's a stepping style. You walk kind of moderately because they have different tempos. Right, of stepping, right. Stepping. And it's very sweet, romantic R&B. Who wrote it? Uh, Ronnie Song and Shante uh, Hampton. Okay. I've worked with Ronnie many, many times. Mm -hmm. uh, people might remember uh, my song, uh, The Other Side of the Rainbow. He produced that for me. A bunch of other things. Mm -hmm. But he's really good at helping me to be contemporary, be um, radio friendly, <laughs> but still stick a long note in there. <laughs> See, th th I've had this conversation with numerous artists, uh, with Will Downing, with others. In fact, um, uh, we're, we're of course shooting this. Last night was the uh, verses with Stephanie Mills and Shaka Khan, and they made the same remark on stage that uh, that for grown folk. For, yeah, yeah. for for veteran artists, yes. for R and B singers, soul singers, there's sit there's 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 no place, if you will, when you look at radio and, and how difficult it is for, for the for the fan base to hear 
the yes. new music. Well, that was a good thing about the pandemic because people like Dean Nice took the internet and made it um, available for people to hear what he wanted to hear. Right. Not just what somebody paid him to do. Right. Or uh, what somebody said was this or that category. He said, this is what I like. And fortunately, I was among those he liked. <laughs> so here I am on your show and with new music. So it's just like when, when uh, I would play music in Club Brown Liquor and people would pop in, uh, play this. No. Because the, the, the thing is, see, see, the thing for me, I mean, I, I love music. I, like I said, I, I think I've got every form of music on my list except polka music. I ain't got no polka music. No polka? No, no polka. Polka don't make the cut. Um, and, <laughs> and so I never know what mood I'm Excuse in. Excuse me. What? <laughs> you don't like polka? It don't make the cut. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Don't make the cut. And so I, I never know what mood I'm in. So I might, I don't know what I feel like playing. And, 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 and what I love about doing that is I might be in the middle of playing something and then it's kind of like, oh, I remember this here. So then I'll play this here. And for a lot of people listening, they're like, man, I never heard that. Right. That's all, that also, I think, uh, right. was one of the great things Absolutely. With, with what D-Nice did. Music uh, that you, you never get to hear or music that you forgot about that you love. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> or music is a way of your life, not somebody's job only. Excuse me if I'm getting the emotion. I know it's my job. But if people don't love it and we don't live it, then there's no job. I mean, right. one, one thing leads to the other, in, in my humble opinion. So. I, I'm very sorry about the pandemic, and we're still losing people, and we've never had anything like this, but there's nothing like something like this to shut down all your little things that you do. And let's see, okay, well, who am I? Mm -hmm. What's my priority? Is it things, is it people? Which people? Um, how am I gonna stay alive first? Uh, <clears throat> how am I gonna keep doing what I wanna do for a living and not just get a job and you know, put a roof over my head. And it seems like I'm always in a pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't fine for me, but I just zone into my discipline, disciple, mm -hmm. and say, okay, who's first? Okay, your family's first. What do they need? <clears throat> um, how can I get that for them? I gotta take care of me. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. So you, you, I feel like you develop a keen sense of self-respect because people need you. I think that's the best reason to do it. Uh, if you do it just because you, you do it, it turns back in on you. And I don't think you have an opportunity to grow. And if you have an opportunity to grow, you have an opportunity to succeed. And if you sing and you make records, you could have a new hit record. <laughs> <laughs> How's that for news? <laughs> and, for you, and, and, and the thing is, for, for you, um, and just look for again, for again, for many veteran artists, it's you still want to put something out. You don't just want to, well, do, oh, just 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 sing a hit. No, there's still there's still stories that you want to tell that are new and fresh. And it's not just a matter of okay, I, I don't. We're hear that. we're alive, right? <clears throat> um, my knees are still good. I, I don't play basketball, <laughs> but it's a living thing. It's part of our life, and. Uh, um, you want to keep living. Um, this is not a job for me, because uh, I have a Bachelor of Arts degree in music ed, I could go teach, but I don't want a job, mm -hmm. I want a passion. <laughs> oh, I agree. look, I look I, I'm with you. I know you are, because I mean, I mean, you're in charge now, right? Yeah, but, 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 I, but, but I here's mean, the interesting thing. I, I mean, really kind of in like, like really, really, really in charge, yes. Yeah, so you can actually kind of know who you are. Yeah. If you're always under somebody else's mantle, you know who they are and that part of you. Well, actually, I was. I did, you was already growing. I, I did me then too. So yeah, I did me. <laughs> yeah, because it was. It was. I probably was my first. That was my second job when I when I really articulated this. I remember we had a conversation and we were in the newsroom, and it was um, it was a sister. She was uh, the job was minority affairs reporter. Basically, that that was the black story job, and I remember we had a conversation. Well, I, I I guessed that when you said minority. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> whether we are or not, right, that, we'll that, call that, that. that. That's basically what, what what the job was. Yes. And what's interesting about that? We we were having a conversation one day, and we were talking about jobs and salaries and stuff along those lines. And I said, I said if I was given the choice between a job paying a hundred thousand dollars where someone was deciding what I 
wrote. Or I got 50,000 and I had the freedom and the flexibility to write what I wanted to write. I said, I'll pass up the 100. And we had this with this vigorous debate where people were like, what, are you crazy? And I was like, no, I'm not crazy. I said, but the reality is um, the freedom and flexibility is important because you want to be able to stretch. You want to be able to do different things. You right. want to be inquisitive. You don't right. want to sort of be locked in. Right. And there's nothing. And I, I'm sure it's not just you. I think it's a natural, uh, I love God, so I say supernatural right. way of progression. Yeah. That's, that's why, at least in America, I can't say for other countries. It's also <laughs> gifting. I mean, when you have the gifts, you want to use them. But want, I think people are more gifted than we realize if we always pigeonholed. And yes, they're boxes. We'll see that, like, since I'm a mature artist and person, <clears throat> I have seen times now that when people get to a certain, what we call retirement age, you get another job because you need to focus, you mm -hmm. need to function, you need to live, you need to grow. And so we're no, so I'm saying, you were probably just ahead of your time. <laughs> I was, it was just, it was this, it, it was this really, and you want to be in was, charge it, of yourself, you know. Right, and that was and that was the thing. It was it was understanding. Look, I, I want to go here, but also I think what it was, I never, I never operated on that gave me validation. Meaning, I was getting ready to tell large, you that I, that I, large newspaper. I could tell that, that by watching you before I even spoke to you. You can kind of see the wheels turning. So there's a, you have to think and choose and a person who does that has a certain personality yeah it's just i, I just don't i just don't for it's me, not just outgoing it's intelligent and it's uh um what do you call it you interact well it, it, like, you're, like, you're, like, not, like in, you're not in some lane by no, yourself no like we're in new york when i was in college uh the whole oh, what the new york times the washington post and i mm -hmm. said no i want to work for them and a friend of mine who used to work in the oh, times, wow. he goes, he goes, what? I said, I can actually do great work wherever I am. You know what you remind me of? The first time I ever read a review of a play, because I didn't study theater. Mm -hmm. Like most very creative black people, we kind of go do it anyhow. And I read the review and I said, why do they think I'm like Mahalia Jackson? Really? Yeah, that's what they compared me to. Mm. So I said, oh, I get it. Because they're white, male, they don't know any other black people. There you go. Yeah. See, I just, uh, I, I think what happens is we, many people are conditioned to think, okay, it's that, it's that thing, it's that, oh, like, right. this is the big thing. So just like in television, it was sort of like people like, oh my God, you, like you were CNN, but I never left TV one. And folks, yeah, but 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 it's CNN. I went, yeah, it's CNN. Well, don't forget. But it's also this TV one. You're probably talking about people who watch you. They know what you said, and that's kind of what they, they take. They don't know the rest of what you know. Yeah, and I think it, it's that, and it's also just this this we we think the big shiny thing <laughs> is what's the greatest thing yeah as yeah, opposed to yeah. whereas for me i fundamentally do believe that you can do great work at a small to mid-size newspaper or I think, magazine i think you have to as opposed to i mean uh, this i'm just interjecting with you i don't mean to cut you off <clears throat> it doesn't have to be just uh, <clears throat> magazine you can do uh, great work on small levels you must because that's where it becomes a personal <clears throat> right it also becomes where <clears throat> you're in charge of this sphere that you call you and <clears throat> you can determine if you're growing or not or if it's satisfying you or not when it's just masses you kind of you can't and you're actually competing you against get yourself lost. you're actually that's that I think that's really the greatest when we talk about competition I mean you may have people who say, oh, you're competing against this this singer or this actor. I think the greatest, <laughs> the greatest challenger to you is really yourself if your desire is to be the absolute best at what you're trying to do. You know why I know that's true? <laughs> I don't know how to, I try to audition. I always lose. So I stop auditioning because I can't compete that way. Really? Yeah, because in theater, for instance, 
and different things. Uh, they have casting agents. And the thing to do is you have a great agent and they send you up to audition for everything. I never learned how to audition. So I always lost the parts. So your deal is, look, I, I know how to do that thing yeah, out there. Yeah, I, I said, you know what? Y'all come and see me do what I do and then y'all put that on tape or something, then, then that'll be my audition. Because I could never compete. Wow. I mean, I'm competing, but I can't do what you do. How long did it take you I to mean, I think that's what you're saying. Yeah, how long did it take you to realize that? How long did it take you to go, this, this ain't working? Not very long, but I was part of a system, so I kept going. But fortunately, I kept doing other things. So now, it's accrued into diversity. I kept surviving. <laughs> Go where they're gonna pay my rent. Mm -hmm. And somebody says, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that. I had already done it. But well, somebody had paid me to do it. Somebody said, okay, we'll hire you. I think it was what you were saying on an individual basis, not just on what um, the Tony Award people said or the, the New York Times people said or uh, um, what's, what's the music award? Uh, Grammys. <laughs> I, I didn't really forget that, but there's been so many. <laughs> And, and there's so many great artists, and there's so many, and the, the world is getting bigger in terms mm -hmm. of how you can participate until you just don't quite look at it that way. And I think I was right because I'm still here. We feel the hidden impacts of climate change that land harder in black, brown, and native communities. Not many people talk about it because they clearly don't know our lives. But with President Biden's landmark infrastructure and climate plans, our issues are finally seen. Removing lead pipes means we know our water is safe. Cutting carbon pollution helps our kids breathe easier. 1.5 million new jobs mean stable work in communities. The impact we need. Right now. So what did your agent say? Because see, it, it, that, it's always interesting when you are, I hate the, I, I really do hate the, hate the phrase talent, but for, <laughs> I, I do, I just, I just, I, 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 I just, Well, I'm grateful that they call me talent. No, but I hate, I hate that word. And I guess for me, it's no, just. No, but I know what you mean as like a, a lower level, this, this well, but, well, instead of an agent or management some or. Use, some people use that phrase also as dismissive. Like, right. oh. Um, the talent, yes. He's talent. And like. What the hell is this? Well, Roland, I've been dismissed so much, I don't pay that no attention. <laughs> see, I can't, now you ain't gonna dismiss me. Oh, I'm see? Like, no, I can't, no, I, I just don't, but, it's just. But see, that's your gift. Is it? I have to say, I have to say, okay, I'm gonna get you another way. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm gonna get you right here. I'm gonna like, let me holler at you. Let me holler at you. <laughs> yeah, see, you do that very well. <laughs> you know, I, no, I, gotta, I gotta go straight with it. Yeah. I, but see, the reason I about the agent piece, because. But actually, did, did you, I didn't answer you. I don't have agents. No, no, but at that time, at that time, at that time, at the time. So when, when yeah, you were so trying I, out, I feel, I feel, was your agent going, "Look, man, well, like, what's the, like, what's the big deal?" And you're like, "Okay, I don't think you understand how this works." I, I don't think I had that conversation with them. I just kept trying, and losing, there. And so I said, "Okay." One of the things I learned is that when we started our, our company called Hush Productions, um, <clears throat> we couldn't find a manager for me, so we started to try to manage myself. And when we did that, we realized that I had already been in, I already had a Tony Award. Um, <clears throat> we started to focus on um, music and, and recordings and um, live concerts and that kind of thing. So what we did is we got somebody in each field instead of having a, a stable of artists or talent, mm -hmm. we had a stable of managers. Mm. Because nobody could tell me I, didn't, I can't do it when I already did it. <laughs> and I wasn't the competitive type so I said okay I'll go somewhere else and see if they'll hire me what what is the uniqueness of the stage I mean the television there's the big screen <laughs> but but the stage is stage period or <clears throat> theater stage Broadway. or theater. Broadway that, that's a completely <clears throat> different animal <laughs> yeah well it's they have a style of writing the script and the stories and um, of course, it's projecting. Um, you have all kinds of electronic help, more so now. 
but it's, I think it's also it's projecting your persona. Uh, I think it's greatly that because when you get on the camera, I was always told you're too big, your eyes are too big, everything is too big, and I'm a little person, so that, that's not good. So I think because because with because with with the camera, it's always it close up. Right, absolutely. Yeah, that's the main main thing, but that that influences everything. Yeah. Because if you want to express something that's very dynamic, you still have to do it in a very, you know, small way, if not quiet. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I think. I'm not an expert in, in um, um, camera work. Yet I hope to do, do more work in that. Most of my work has either been live concerts or um, live theater. Does, does live theater give you a different rush than singing live from let's say concert I, I, live I, theater I think so. concert because with music essentially it doesn't really matter what you look like you can close your eyes or da, da, da. in a play or in a theater your whole body is telling the story mm -hmm. so that's a huge difference to me especially someone who hasn't studied and is learning it on the job because if you're wrong you feel wrong right in front of everybody but i mean you get plenty plenty of rehearsal that's important too and of course with, with um camera work you take everything in bits and pieces mm -hmm. and rehearse it right so you really have to kind of look at the whole thing in bits and pieces and differently and then realize oh and then they're going to take it from all these different angles and it, you look at it totally differently Whereas uh, on stage, boo, when we hit, we hit. <laughs> and you better be on time. I don't care what, I don't care how you feel, <laughs> what mood you in. Right. You got to deliver that thing. Yeah, yeah. You have to bring your whole body, health, and everything up to whatever the level is. Maybe that's why we're all so bigger than life. I can't bring it down. I'm trying to bring it down, but <laughs> I'm excited. Forget what that. Can I Forget tell that. You? that. That. But you know what? The, I th that's always. Uh, I'm excitable too, so I think theater is good for me for that. Right, but again, it's, it's a personality. I'm thing. already yelling and screaming at you. It's a personality and, thing. It's just. And, that, wait, and I'm not even mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> when, when, when did you? When did you know? I got this. I got. I. I've got something mm. that. Mm. I don't care. I could try something else. Mm. But I, I got this. This is it. I need to stay here. Yeah. Uh, well, it's in my blood. This, so, so maybe you know it before you know it, because you're around it. No, no, no. But, but, we, but, but well, when you, did you know? Me when, personally, when, oh, as an when, when artist. Did you, when did you go? I know. Oh, okay. I got this. Okay. I, I, I've so got. So I feel like you're saying to me as a profession, not just as, as something that um, excites me. And I want to do. I'm talking about when you I mean, like what age? What was it? Was there something? Was there a moment? Was there a moment where you where again not others saying, "Oh my God, now but you seem great. We do this great." Where you went? I've got something, and I know I got something, and now I'm about to do this thing. No, because I, I, that's what I'm saying. <clears throat> the difference say, from, between you and me, you have a very definitive. Persona, something in your head says that. I knew at 14. Yeah, something in me says, I can't teach school no more, I'm sorry. I do it very well, I love it, but daddy and mother, that's your job. I don't know what I'm gonna do, I'm probably gonna fail. If I do, I'll come back and teach. But please let me try, I just gotta try. I gotta try, then keep on trying, trying, trying. And I, but I found out I had something <laughs> in Pearly. Mm -hmm. I remember standing before the mic, <clears throat> and after getting all the lines and all the rehearsals and the different previews under my belt, you could kind of stand there and think about something besides what you would do. I said, oh my God, they're looking at me. <laughs> I mean, to actually realize that. Right. And take it in and intellectualize it. I said, oh. I got something. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do this. Mm -hmm. I, and see, now, what happens if I say this? It's a comedy, so they laugh. So also, they're laughing at the way I look. I'm good at this. It's happening on the job. Mm -hmm. So I'll keep this job.
Curl Prep Natural Solutions. Uh, her product is organic. It's a two-step uh, curl defining system. Uh, this video here, you can check it out. People have been lining up to see the product in action at hair shows. When they take a seat to try it, they simply don't believe it is their hair. Now, you can, of course, access the products at curlprep.com. Uh, curlprep.com, it works on any hair. It has two steps, uh, sweet butter and uh, sweet defining gel, both at curlprep.com. And parents, you can also, you'll love this system because you can comb the product through your child's hair with your fingers. And of course, our seasoned saints, they love the product as well. It has products that are great for twists, braids, locks, weaves, even those wigs and extensions. Folks, go to curlprep.com. If you use the promo code ROLAND, you get a 30% discount using the promo code ROLAND, lowercase R-O-L-A-N-D. Uh, and say, again, go to C-U-R-L-P-R-E-P.com, C-U-R-L-P-R-E-P.com, promo code ROLAND, 30% discount. I was once asked, do you, do, do you get antsy or you are afraid before you go out? I said, no. For you, are, I, uh, are you ready? No. Are you ready to hit that thing? Are you ready? I'm going to do it, but I'm not ready. <laughs> now, you know, I know you. I see, that's interesting because normally when we talk about big personalities, folks who just, it's like, I, it's, I, it's sort of like you're you you you're, you're a caged bird and you're ready to. It's like yo, just just I need you to open that gate. I need you because I, I I'm ready to go. Mm -hmm. That's I get ready and I'm like that, but my personality is oh, but you know I'm not the only one here. This is not I'm sharing this space. What if they? I'm always I'm always. Um, Assist myself. I don't mean you know follow somebody, but assist in, in a way. Even though I'm in charge, I still think my job, if I do it well, is assisting. Okay. See when that light. See, I, see. So in television, normally we have a thing called a tally. You know, you know a tally light. When that light hit, it it's it's it, it's 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 like the hundred. It's like the hundred. Uh, With dash. Like the hundred yard dash. Yo. When that gun fire. Oh, but it is. It is. See, and I, that's I, like I, like when you see the like you see like you see before the race. Yeah. You see them they'll warming be, up, they'll baby. Be kicking their leg out, <laughs> and they looking down the hole. That is so funny. I, I didn't real I didn't realize. One day I was I was getting ready to speak, and and and, and I was it was it was sort of like the same thing. It's like yeah. a boxer, and just I was sitting there, and it was just and I was just moving, and I was just sitting here. And they were like. You nervous? Nope. And it, but it was, the whole thing was like, yo, it's time to hit that stage. Let's go. <laughs> it, I mean, I'm talking about, and it's, it's, it's like, yo, when we walk out there, and I was, it's, I, so I was asked, I was asked where they come from, and it was weird. Growing up in Houston, we, thinking back, first of all, and I hate that we don't have these things anymore. We had, there was, we had an expansive um, um, summer program, arts and culture. Mm -hmm. And I remember, and my God, I, I think I was probably 10 or 11, where they had this, where the different rec centers would, 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 would practice singing routines, whatever. And then that was this citywide performance at the then Albert Thomas Convention Center. And all I remember, all I remember, there were thousands of people there, thousands of people and absolutely not being afraid. But that's you. And it was like, I, I swear, I, I wish I had that gift, um, but some people are like that. You're, you're, yeah. That's a gift that you have. But see, now all, all of the getting ready and everything, well, well, I go to the gym every day, I, I like to run, I like to, I like to do things that make you breathe hard. Um, um, back in the day, I would uh, rehearse my voice and stuff, but it's in shape because I lived that life. But mm. that's when I do it because I know that when it's time to go on, anything could just scatter me. 
you know, if, uh, if I'm coming in here and I'm getting ready to talk to you and I don't know everything's all right, I'll say, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to just stop saying, uh, so I can just, I just scatter instead of gathering. Uh -huh. So I, I work at doing all these things that you got to do to put together because uh -huh. you're already put together. Yeah, I'm ready to go. No, I'm, I'm, I'm never ready. <laughs> we can be over here. We, you ever ready and I'm never ready. <laughs> we, we can be over here just doing this thing and then yeah. all of a sudden it's like this here. And literally, if we got... Go right into that. Um, I envy you. That mode. I think part, also. I think part of that also by because by being a journalist. You, I was going to say, and you like you, you can be you can be at a party you, and news you, breaks. You're not just journalists. You do hard news. If if I'm talking about my hit record, I don't have to be as you know uh, uh, responsible as you do. I could make a mistake. It's, it's, it's not the same thing. It's sort of a you know. It's like you're a warrior. Well, we have these conversations. Uh, we have the conversations with my crew a lot. My, my, and I use examples. And I really do think so much of it goes back to my grandmother had a catering business. And so much of what I do goes back to that because. Well, that helps too that somebody in your family was actually in business. But the, the preparation. Yeah. Every, everything was the preparation. Yeah. And, and how you had to. Cause when I think back, again, the week go on, we're getting ready for it. So we wake up in the morning, it's 6 a.m., my brother, we gotta go pack the stuff. But it was always a trip because the wedding's at one o'clock, wedding's at two o'clock, mm -hmm. wedding's at three o'clock. And there's a rhythm to that where you're doing this, you're doing that, but when it hits 12, you're three hours away. Right. And then it hits one, and you're two hours away. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's sort of like your, 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 your vision sort of goes, it's focused, and then, it's all, and then all of a sudden, and it's like you could be in that last hour, and it's sort of like movement here, like that. Like there's no wasted movement. There's I was going to no say, uh, not just movement, the final movements, and you've worked it all out. I think that uh, I, I'm saying the same thing. My parents were entertainers. Mm -hmm. They were black entertainers. My mother was a singer, so they're all used. Somebody always actually they work for people. They don't run their own business. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why it's very important to, for me now and for me to uh, pass it to my um, younger people and, and, and my daughter. <clears throat> because without the business part, understanding how it works, mm -hmm. whatever your talent or art is, is not going to succeed. Mm -hmm. It's two sides of one coin. It's, it's not two different things. Mm -hmm. If you don't have anything but yourself to take care of, you've got to know what your budget is, what, what, uh, what your talent is, or you know, what the work is going to be. Uh, who's going to be your customers, where you're going to work. You have to structure all of that. That's what business is. That's what you got as a child. And, and so I, I still don't have it. <laughs> 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 but I, I know what it is. I know what, what was missing. And um, once again, I think the pandemic kind of showed uh, people like me the things that you, you've been struggling with. Everybody's doing that now. You've mm -hmm. you got an even playing field. Now let's see what happens with people like you. Let's talk failure, disappointment. Some people look at failure and disappointment as awful, horrible, I don't want to talk about it, I don't want to have to relive it. Yet others look at that experience not as failure or disappointment, but what did I learn from it? How did I how have you dealt with failure and disappointment? Longevity. I never wanted to go through any of the horrible things that I went through. But every time I woke up and saw I wasn't dead. <laughs> <laughs> you like, I'm still here? Oh my God. Okay, all right. <laughs> I'm in the land of the living, y'all, still. <laughs> <laughs> and looked around, <clears throat> and especially later on, some of the things that happened to me meant that if I didn't get up, I, I lost my daughter. I didn't know where she was. So I had to figure out how to survive, how to eat, how to live. You lost her, what do you mean? I don't want to go into to the Got details because she's here first of all. She may not want me telling that story. But uh, um, possession of her, we, the family bro broke down, fell apart. I was homeless. Uh, I had to figure out, I, I didn't have a manager or an agent or anybody anymore, and I'm the talent. <laughs> 
And so I got to figure out how to be the agent. And mm. I had to figure out how does business work. And uh, <clears throat> I, I was so a fish out of water. Like yourself, so what different people helped me. They helped me get back uh, on the stage again. One of the first plays I did was a gospel play. It, was somebody, it seemed coincidental, but I realized from these things happening, I won't go through all, all the details. Oh, I believe in God, I'm right. That's the smartest thing I've done so far. <laughs> <laughs> it possibly could be all right. I couldn't even say then it's going to be all right. But out there on the road with these people, uh, I was so devastated, Roland, that I couldn't really speak. When you say devastated, was it, how did I get here? I but I'm thinking these things. I can't even talk about it. Mm. I'm, I'm sitting on this bus traveling with these incredible people. I remember one time or another, someone would just come, say, on the bus over where, just sit with me, be with me. Mm. If I can't tell you what's on, on my mind, they, you can't even say anything to me. So you can be so what do you call it, just stopped and stunned. Mm -hmm. Well, thank God you can still think. And <clears throat> I mean, I didn't have a bank account, so they showed me how to uh, do my business at the post office. Well, fortunately, it was chitlin', so they paid me cash. <laughs> 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 so I stuck it in my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I learned that God is joy. So I'm being funny, but it's, there is a spirit of joy that, that keeps us alive. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that now, because he's given me time to come through it, get well, um, <clears throat> get my career back, get my family back, get, get things back, and um, repent of some of the stupid things that, that I did to, to, to help it happen. And I'll let go of the things that, if, if I could cuss like I used to, or <laughs> If I knew how to use a gun. <laughs> <laughs> but you know how to let those things go because it, it just is not an easy thing to do and it's not something I can just tell somebody just even how, how to do it because it is many, many processes. But I know um, by looking at myself in, in the mirror, I'm okay, I'm healthy, life is good. And now I know something not only how to survive and how to do what I want to do, but how to help somebody else that's going through it. That's what it's all about for me right now. You mentioned joy. Do you still, first off, did you ever lose the joy of something coming out of here, out of here, and putting a smile on someone's face. I never lost that, but what I realized is that I was born depressed. <laughs> I, uh, <clears throat> the lady who raised me was, uh, um, she wasn't a sharecropper, she was an orphan who, who traveled on sharecroppers farm. Mm -hmm. So she didn't have that much structure in her life. My mother <clears throat> um, was a single parent with me. She was trying to take care of me and my grandmother who had had strokes, couldn't speak by that time, so I don't know my family history. And um, so when I say depressed, I mean, I had no siblings. Wow. So um, there was no music in my life because my mother was gone trying to raise uh, money to raise, to take care of us, I'm sorry. But to skip a little bit, she married an incredible person. Uh, <clears throat> he was a musician, they worked together. So now I had a man in my life, the head of my family. He had a son and a daughter, so now I had a sister and a brother. Mm. I had that, that nucleus right. community. So he, he, he told so me to talk, don't beat people down no more. So like I had that, you, beat down. Basically, prior to that, you were basically alone. You were, you yeah. were sort of, you're, you're, you're this being that's in this room all by yourself right. and right. nothing happening, nothing external, no talking, right. no nothing, right. and this, you're just being. A lot of me was that way. And then when my mother married my stepfather, music became the centerpiece of our family. I'm already 10 years old. And we're all, music is, everybody's singing, whatever. Right. But it was around that time that I've, I've discovered that I even have a voice. 
So everything's been late for me. Now it's okay since I'm, I'm in my latter days. That's okay. <laughs> but I think that's why I'm blossoming now, because the things that make you whole are in my life now. When you talk about blackness and what happens in black culture, we're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause too long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Check some money orders. Go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037-0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. As you were talking, you were talking, as you were, when you say you were born depressed, there are a lot of, and I've had psychologists and others on my show talking about this here. And they often talk about the, the PTSD, the trauma of yeah. black America. Yeah. And how it's. You're, you're, you're born into trauma. Right. And how it's not discussed, it's not dealt with, and I don't think many people, times we know it. Then people don't all of a sudden they get to be twenty five, thirty, and thirty five, and forty. Then go like, well, what? What the hell? What the going heck on? happened? Not here. realizing right. that this thing predates right. them. Right. And of course, we can all trace essentially back to slavery. You're taken out of your family, out of your culture. You're traumatized. You're brought into a system of trauma. But, but I'm well. And then, of course, <laughs> you go to the music business, and that's a whole trauma unto itself. Right, a whole series of traumas, yes. And that's, a, that's a whole different But I feel like maybe that's why I was ready for music, whether I knew it or not. I can't compete, but I didn't give up. Mm -hmm. You keep fighting. You, just, you, you learn you're a warrior of some kind. You have, uh, you, you talked about finding that moment, knowing that moment when you were on uh, the stage with Pearlie. And so then you begin to transition to <laughs> other acting roles, and these things begin to open o o open up for you. Well, that opened the door for so many things because the Tony Award, and it was so um, so successful. It was the first black play many um, black people came to see after it became successful, and that took me into television. I mean, I did the Flip Wilson show, B. Arthur, Carol Burnett, uh, Tonight Show. It opened the door for me to go into television. Uh, when still many black artists were not seen mm -hmm. there. So it, it, opened, it opened a way for me to go learn how to do television on the job. You know. Who taught you? Who did you learn from? Everybody that I worked with. Well, th um, the first play I did was uh, Hair, the Broadway show Hair. Mm -hmm. And I learned on the job there. And uh, I, I wound up replacing Diane Keaton because one of the black girls said, well, every time somebody tries to replace that role, you always choose a person who's blonde haired, blue eyed. How come a black woman can't do it? She said, why don't you let Melba try it? <laughs> they said, well, we just didn't think of it. And you were like, sister, appreciate that. Right, but that's, a, that's what the environment was like there. And I got that job because I had stopped, I just told you, teaching school, but I was doing studio work. And one of the people I worked with was, was uh, Valerie Simpson. Mm. And Nick Ashford, and we, we did a lot of studio work. Mm -hmm. And one of the um, um, sessions was for the Broadway show Hair. They were still casting, and so they invited us to all come down and sing for the director and the producer. So I didn't really audition for that, so 
<laughs> was I still See, back, back to the auditioning stuff. Yeah, I still don't know how to audition. But I, why do I have to? I got the part. <laughs> You're like, I don't know how I got it. No. But look at here. I got it. I'm here, so. How long did that run? Hair? God. It, it ran for about 10 years. I, mean, I didn't stay for, for that long because um, my f friend who told me to do the lead, if they gave it to me, she said, Mel, you don't know how to audition. Why don't you go around while you're on uh, Broadway? Just go for some auditions and see if you can learn how to audition. But I was trying to learn how to audition, but I, I got the part for Pearly. I was trying to learn how to audition, but I got the part. Mm. So that, that was like a, about a year and a half after I had been doing hair. <laughs> so you get, don't audition, you get hair, don't audition, you get pearly. Right. And you like, you know what, this audition and stuff is kind of overrated. But yeah, because after that, um, uh, Jeffrey Holder did um, Timbuktu, and he wanted me, and he wanted Eartha Kitt. So he chose the people that he wanted for that, so I didn't audition for that. Um, I also got the, uh, to be the first black lady to do the role of Fontaine in Les Miserables, because I was trying to do my own one-woman play in Hollywood, Florida, and a gentleman by the name of Richard J. Alexander, who did the casting for Les Mis, saw me and said, gee, I didn't know you sang um, classical music. I want you to do Les Mis. So I, I was auditioning, but my way. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, all right, I can do that. Yeah, well, I mean, you already seen me do it. I mean, the play is not very good, because I'm not a playwright. But you heard me sing the song. With, with you. It's creative, you know, you're just trying to, trying to figure out what to do, but because you really are where you're supposed to be, mm -hmm. things do happen for you. As, as, as your career began to unfold, um, you're dropping successful songs, you're doing well, then decade changes. <laughs> oh Lord, yes. <laughs> and for a lot of people who do not understand this, this field, whether it's music, whether it's television, whether it's, whether it's movies, yeah. how that that transition can be abrupt. I mean, I think about uh, what was the, the the crazy DJ in Chicago. I think it was Steve Dahl. You know, the night that killed disco, and where where all of a sudden the the, the, the when they at Comiskey Park and they just tore up all the disco albums, whatever, and oh, how yeah, yeah. it that. just led to this complete. We despise it. It just, it just literally just overnight, and and that's just one aspect. What about just radio uh, personalities and DJs and and how how that continues to change over, over yeah. the decades? Yeah, what I'm saying is that how, how something can be so abrupt. Yeah, that it can just stop. And, and all of a sudden you're going, well, hold up, like I was, I, like I was hot. Right. Then right. all of a sudden, right. It, well, it it happened to me in a different way, but it's still the same thing. It'll happen one way or another. Uh, um, everything has stopped in my life and my career, and, but I had these tracks. But nobody, everybody was using live bands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I didn't know how to manage them. I just tried to talk myself into getting a job and see if they would hire me. Then after a while, something eased into tracks. But I didn't know that's what I was doing. But in the meantime, I was trying to figure out how to keep a roof over my head. Mm -hmm. but, I remember in my mind thinking, I remember my parents and, every, and their musicians mm -hmm. saying, oh, well, that's never going to last. And before I was maybe 40 years old, seeing at least every decade there being a definitive change and saying, that's not true. Things are going to change. Yep. And having that kind of be somewhere around me to say, well, are there different pieces of you that are making some adjustments in case they change? and listening slightly differently perhaps than you did before and like okay when Motown came in there that was the first I think electric bass mm -hmm. doesn't seem like it was that long ago see what you're describing which I love about it is understanding there's going to be a shift there's going to be a shift but having but being open-minded enough to know whether then when the shift happens you don't get left behind. Get to step in, and it's not going to be easy. Stay in shape. Mm -hmm. If you're not in shape, get in shape. Right. I I, I, I joke a lot with, with folks, uh, especially uh, millennials who work for me, because when it comes to technology, people always go, ah, you, you don't know that. Let, 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 your, let, let your grandkids, let your 
show you. Let your nieces and nephews show you. And I'm like, they can't show me a damn thing. <laughs> because it, it because because for me, the, the whole the whole point <laughs> of when when you're in this business is. For me, it's a constant state of learning. When you're in this life, that's yep. what I'm speaking to. Yep. I guess one of the things yep. I've realized by being the instrument, it's about living in all the different parts of other people's lives. Living and learning. And, living and, and learning. And, and constantly, constantly evolving. And, and I, I, yes. Or as I say, you're never going to, I, it was, it was, what was it? My Angelo, when she was, um, someone asked her, they said, was she a, a Christian? She says, no. She said, I'll never reach the point where I am fully a Christian. She said, I am constantly trying right. to learn what that means. Right. Right. And for me, it's sort of the same thing. It's like, it is there, there'll never be a time Wh whatever area you of life know you're talking all of about. this because there's something new. There's always something out. new. And thank God for that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just. It's but, not over but, yet. But, but it's the pursuit. But yeah, to me, to pursue, it's the joy. We mentioned yeah. joy. Yeah. It's the joy in the pursuit of learning. And what I'm glad that you mentioned about that, I didn't have joy before. I got it. I caught it. And it's a part of, should be a part of every, everyone. But if you've been traumatized so much, you kind of lay it aside or you never get it. So what, so what released you from that spirit of depression into joy? I believe it was pearly because now I know what a comedy is. I mean, we call it a comedy, you're supposed to laugh. But what it's made up of, that's kind of the best kind of actor that I am. I learned that. And I said, mm -hmm. oh my God, this is, this is living. And it's wisdom and you connect with whatever it is that people are supposed to be together. When we don't even know each other. And you're white and I'm black and you're sitting there and I'm just saying, what the? But we get it because it, it's, it's alive. And so ever since then, that that Because it curly... personalizes it, because I'm doing a job, and, and it's a script, and it well, has all these categories and names, and I'm standing there, I can observe it. Mm -hmm. I said, oh. <laughs> and ever since then, you like, yeah. all right, let's go. Right, and I'm saying it should be comedy. I haven't had that yet, but. Melba, the TV show. Again, during other TV shows. Um, oh my goodness, you've got a, sh a major network show named after you. That's the big time. It, it is. <laughs> then? I lost it because. Tragedy. Uh, because I didn't understand how the business part of it works. Because I should have been able to go and get another manager, another agent, another stuff. I didn't understand how it worked to get that part of it going because it, it's not just your popularity or your stardom. That part of it is talent too. Mm. Great gifting on that aspect of it. And I lost that part. So when you're having these conversations with young and up and coming artists, are you making it clear to them that you better understand the business of the business? Well, I, and I'm not the only one. Everybody is especially black people, mm -hmm. <laughs> we understand that somebody uh, runs your business, you're not in charge. You have to understand how that works. That's the other part of you. And I th we're, we're showing young people, I see everywhere now, even if we're giving some kind of course, to how the business aspect of mm -hmm. it, or how you can teach it, or how you can make a business out of it, because it's the other part of it. That's the part when you grow up, after you learn whatever it is you learn, what, you, what do you do with it besides, you know, make a dollar? which of course we want you to do, but, but that's not the most important thing anymore now that we can finally do that. <laughs> I mean, you gotta make a living, right. you know, if somebody keeps you from doing that, you can't live. But now that we've got that, okay, what's the other whole part of living? Why do we work? Why do we do this? Because a lot of people have plenty of money, they stop working, they die. So what or, is it? Or, or, or when they say, even if they stop working, they stop also doing other things that are getting their neurons firing and get and keep and and, 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 and keeping them on their toes. Because Precisely. You, you, you can stop working, but you could be doing some other things that are still challenging you. You should be. And challenging you, you mentally and physically, things along those lines. Precisely. Uh, 
you, you've, you've crossed paths with a lot of people in your career. Who would you say was the absolute, I'll use your word, joy? Joy. Who brought you the most joy working with them? <laughs> Freddie Jackson. Really? Why? He should have his own comedy show. That's how he is, like, off stage. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to sing or something, I don't like to be around him because you make me laugh so much, I'll be hoarse. <laughs> But he's the most because he just starts going and he starts. But then he goes into these different characters. He's, he goes into this character where he's a church lady and, and he's, oh my God, I need a crash helmet. I've got hit with the Holy Ghost. Oh Lord, have <laughs> Freddie Jackson, this wonderful singer. Wow. That's how he is. But then so am I. <laughs> hatred on the streets, a horrific scene, a white nationalist rally that descended into deadly violence. White people are losing their damn minds. As an angry pro-Trump mob storms the U.S. Capitol, we've seen shock. We're about to see the rise of what I call white minority resistance. We have seen white folks in this country who simply cannot tolerate black folks voting. I think what we're seeing is the inevitable result of violent denial. This is part of American history. Every time that people of color have made progress, whether real or symbolic, there has been what Carol Anderson at Emory University calls white rage as a backlash. This is the rise of the Proud Boys and the Boogaloo Boys. America, there's going to be more of this. Here's all the Proud Boys, guys. This country is getting increasingly racist in its behaviors and its attitudes because of the fear of white people. The fear that they're taking our jobs, they're taking our resources, they're taking our women. This is white fear. Who would you love to do something with that you have not gotten a chance to? Some you like, you know what? I really want to work. Now, whether it's whether it's a stage, whether it's singing, I really would love to work with that person. I think I would be great with, and she would with me, Stephanie Mills. Mm. Why? We have a heart for each other. We, we've never been like cut buddies, but every once in a while, our paths will cross, and she'll say, Melba. How, and she'll ask me about something very personal that she knows that perhaps was either hurtful or... And I'll say the same to her. The other day I said to her, was, was a few months ago, would you like to do something together? She said, she says it like this, yes, that's Stephanie. <laughs> and I, I hope at some point in the future we get to do something um, on Broadway together. That'll be interesting. I think we would sing well together. Uh, I think she has a, a side of comedy that mm. we would see with me. There's a seriousness that, that she could express, and so could I. If you were on stage, and maybe, it's, maybe it is Stephanie Mills, packed audience, packed audience. Of course. <laughs> you on one stage with the microphone, they on the other side of the stage with the microphone, and y'all get to go at it. Not in terms of like, I'm gonna beat you down. No, but with. But to, but this person would bring the, and it could be male or female. They, they, they are gonna bring the best out in me and they gonna make me bring my A game. I'm gonna make them bring their A game. We gonna blow this thing, to blow the roof off. Who would that be? Barbara Streisand. Really? I would I, I would not have guessed that. Why? What? 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 What is it about? Because her? I'm a fan. <laughs> Did you tell her? Hmm? Have you told her that? I I, I don't know. I don't know if I have. Y'all passed cross before? She came to see Pearly. She came backstage and I saw this lady standing at my door. 
And I realized it with her, she says, Melba, how do you do that? Poily? Poily? How do you? She tried to imitate me. <laughs> <laughs> and it does sound like her, too. That's Thank funny. You. Thank That's you funny. Ah! Thank you. But, I mean, I don't know that it would be good, but you asked a question, so it's rhetorical. No, but it's just, it, it's so, sort because of, the whole point, the whole point of it is, is somebody who you, you, you respect, you respect, you admire, but you know that they're going to come with their A game and they're going to come with you. I don't know that. When you ask me that, I'm just thinking something in my imagination. No, it's going to happen. No, no, no. You, it'll, know. It'll, it'll, you know, because I'm again, not really that, thinking about the reality. I'm just thinking about the dream of it. Right, that's, but that's what I'm saying. That's, I don't that, care if it's real or not. That to me, <laughs> but, but that's the thing that. That's to, excitement to, and joy, and that, yeah. you know, that we're fans of people too, and we just right. And that's the, and that's the thing I think a lot of people people forget and don't understand that uh, that yes, you listen to other people, right? And you watch other people because look, she's been she's what directed a movie. She's been right. She's done everything. In, she started right. in movies. And she's done everything she's she done, wanted to do. Yeah, all of that. Think, yeah. And that's that's was always great uh, to be able to do that. And uh, yeah, and having somebody to say, yeah. Let's go on stage together. You, you, you Donna Summers you. did it. I do me. How about that great lady, huh? Mm. Donna Summers. That didn't seem very likely, but she did it, Miss Barbara. See, that'd be interesting. But I definitely see you and Stephanie Mills. <coughs> I, def I, de I definitely see that. I definitely see that. I hope that happens. Make it happen. Well, Say, well, Stephanie, come on, let's go. Let's well, do this. She's got a few other things she wants to do, too. <laughs> Well, we, we all do. Yeah, so uh, that's like, why I uh, said. Stephanie, hope. put me at the top of the list. <laughs> Let's go. I know you got 10 things going on. Melba needs to be one or two. You heard what he said, Stephanie. That's all. I'm telling you. That's, that's, that's what you do. That's what you do. Okay. So you got so you got your new music out. So what do you want to do? Do You, you, you want to tour? I'm you going wanna... to tour. I'm already set to tour. UK, starting um, December. <clears throat> I'm going out to Sarasota to do some master classes. People want to know how to hold that long note. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, you you've been known to do that before. How how do you hold it? Where how do you do it? What what's the key to it? It's taking time, but it's stamina and breath and um, learning learning how the whole breathing mechanism works. Um, not just the lungs, but the uh, um, diaphragm, um, all the sinuses, throat, everything, everything, your mind, where you place it. And, and and that's all through practice. That's all through practice. Lots of practice. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's like a sporting activity. I think everybody could do do it or do do better than what they can do mm -hmm. just by practicing. But I may have a, 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 an extraordinary capacity too. I don't know. Well, I mean, I wasn't always able to do it. That's why I say that. Which means that you you worked at it. You worked you I worked, worked at, at it. your craft. Yes. J Jeffrey, when I interviewed Jeffrey, Jeffrey Osborne, he said that he said what COVID did for him was. He said he did voice voice lessons. He taught voice. No, he took them. Yeah, for himself. He said he said he said. Well, like, you know you could teach. He said, you heard that he voice. You seen that voice. Right, voice is amazing. And he's always in great athletic condition. Yeah, he said I hadn't done scales. Oh. In, he said decades, and he said right. I actually. But had, he worked all the time. He said, so. I, right. He said I actually had the time to yeah. work on my voice. Yeah. And to train my voice. I went to the gym, honey. Cause I wanted to wear them high heel shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see me on D Nice? I didn't see you. You gotta see. You gotta see the blue shoes, baby. You saw uh, on his. Uh, and, and they swayed too. <laughs> on his on his live. <laughs> he did the show in Brooklyn. Oh, oh! When he did the um, um, yes, yes. When he had the concert. Yeah. Had the concerts, yeah, because I was supposed to go to the one that was in L.A. Yeah. And then I had a shoot that came up. Yes. Like, that whole week was crazy because he was in L.A., he did Brooklyn, he did Atlanta. Yeah. Uh, and so, so, uh, so, you, so you were in training for that? Yeah, I had to go to the gym so I could do my releves and stand up in the high heel shoes. <laughs> yes. you like, look at here, I'm about to sit here and do this thing, so. I'm about to stand here. <laughs> <laughs> Is it... Um, <laughs> How interesting is it to come across somebody today who who discovers your music or rediscovers? Oh, it's fabulous. That's one of the things that the pandemic too and D Nice and all of the DJs that kind of followed that path. They mm -hmm. kind of connected 
um, everything. It's not all in one lane, <coughs> mm -hmm. but it's it's quite amazing. I have a, a lot of, a lot of young people started to have podcasts and stuff, and so they said, "Oh well." Who's Melba Moore? <laughs> you know. And all of a sudden, what, they're calling you up to do the podcast? Yeah. And, do, and so, uh, so are you developing this this new generation Absolutely. of fans? And you're like, yo, this cool. Yeah. It's, it's wonderful. I feel like, in a way, I'm in the classroom again, so you get mm -hmm. to connect with uh, uh, people uh, younger. Last question for you. Because you say, oh, I've done this and I've done that. No Been there, done I, that. I don't want to tell nope. I couldn't do it. <laughs> what, what is it you would absolutely love to do? Doesn't matter what it is that you have not done. I want to have consistency now. Mm. I'm going to have this really great, successful song. I want to crank them out. For one consistency. thing, consistency. Yes, uh, I I should be in theater consistently. I think I'd like to do that. So you say that you've had it's been staccato in your career, yes. Where, where yes. A, a moment or a period of success. Back. And, 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 and so, fortunately, uh, uh, since God has given me longevity, they're kind of piling up and see. <laughs> but I'd really like to do 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 them um, every so often and be able to anticipate when that season is going to be because the theater usually has a season, or, um, different music has a season, um, films consistency. have. Interesting. Yes, consistency. Yeah. Interesting. Consistency. Yeah. So your deal is, for the next five, ten years, I want to kill this thing. Right. I mean, what? Because that's what you do when you're successful, what, is it, what, right? Isn't Betty White like 96, almost yeah. 100? That's a good example. And she turned stuff down. Well, that's the way it should be. It's not common, but I think it, I could do that. I mean, seriously. She working at a book, she, you know. Yes. Yeah. That's what I like to do. Then after I do that, <clears throat> then I see what would I like to do. <laughs> <laughs> right, we could, we, there's always. Think of something. I don't there's know. There's always another. I've thing. never done that, so. Right, it's always another thing. Always another thing. Yeah, I've never done that, so I like to do that. See, that that would be success to me. You can do that when you feel like it, because mm -hmm. you know how it works. Mm -hmm. Okay, put that there now. What is what what is the mystery of life going to show me now? <laughs> Well, I believe uh, it's a lot more in store um, to be inquisitive, mm. um, to be free, or as the Catherine Ponder wrote in her book, uh, open your mind to receive. Oh, that's more than a notion to receiving. Yep, but also open your mind to receive. Yes. A bunch of people are received, it's being sent they're and not receiving it because the mind is not open. Mind is closed. Yes, yes. Good chatting with you. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Always good. I think you can tell I had a good time. Yes, you're a <laughs> joy. <laughs> joy. <laughs> so you ready to hit that stage? Yeah. All right. Good thank seeing you. you. Thank you.